there's a desperate need in America for saints, the body of Christ, to get back to the root of why they first believed, why they first began, who is their first love, and is is the thing you do driven by the spirit and power of God, Jesus. or is it just contrived by talents and personalities? Yes. It's a desperate need. There are children dying, as you've seen firsthand. Yeah. There are young men and women being sold into prostitution across the planet. And in the United States, because of mass media, we've been taught to close our eyes and mask ourselves yeah. from the realities of this world. True. And if ever there is a time when the church needs to truly get up, wake up, and see the big picture of what God yeah. is doing. And that's the big key is what is God doing? And be willing to say yes. It requires sacrifice. But as you and I both know, when you submit to what God has called you to do, yeah. even though in the beginning it may seem like the most minuscule thing, God always begins with a seed. And the, the first time you water your seed is when you say yes to God. That's when the first drop Hallelujah. hits that seed. Yes. Your yes, yes is the first watering of the seed. And when it starts to break forth, stay planted like those trees in Scotland, in the Highlands. Stay planted and let the roots go deep so that no matter what comes, you're not moved. Even where I live here in Jamestown, it's a town of 1,800 people. And I've had people say, why are you in such a small town? And I remind them, Nazareth was tiny. Bethlehem was tiny. God Absolutely. is not moved by geology, geography, or economy. Mm -hmm. He's looking for hearts that say yes, and the one that is willing to just stay simple and get back to that first love. That is He's what mattered in the first place. He's the reason you and I said yes to ministry. Yeah. He's the reason you and I said, Lord, I want you to be the king of my life. He's the reason you broadcast every single day. And he's the reason we cannot stop preaching the gospel. No. That is so powerful. Let me tell you what. I believe that our, as you're speaking just now, Jason, that our pastors watching us. A lot of pastors watch us. And you are despaired. A friend of mine, a pastor of mine said that he read somewhere that 40% of churches are closing, pastors quitting, thousands are quitting every month. And I always say this, and I say this continuously. Today, what, what's today's date, Andrew? It's the second, second. second. I am not quitting. I want you to write this down somewhere in your house. I am not quitting on the 2nd of March, 2021. Today is not the day I'm going to quit because the devil uses discouragement and uses all that kind of stuff, the, the garbage that he'll get to, to, to dissuade you and distract you from the calling. I've had reasons to quit. My Lord, I've had reasons to quit. But yeah, how do you quit a calling? How do you quit you DNA? Can. My, I'm Scottish. And, and, and I can't, it's like me waking up tomorrow morning and saying, okay, I'm going to be from Tennessee. I, I live in Tennessee, but... As soon as I open my mouth, you know where I'm from because the DNA and who I am speaks through me. Absolutely. And my, that's so powerful, Jason. So, so powerful. I think that, that, was the, that was the contrasting point for my life was that when I came to Jamestown, yeah. let me give you a super fast backstory. I know we're limited on time and I want to get this word, but I came to Jamestown um, December 18th of 1994. And I was actually up here because my financer for music was a local attorney for Nashville. Huh. And he invited me up. He had a small demo studio in the back of a home next to his office. And so I went in to record a demo for the country artist, Joe Diffie. And uh, it was just an odd time. I re made the recording. But the guy who ran the sound booth, who ran the mixer, named Terry Rogers. He's just a rocker from back in the 80s. He had long blonde hair and he, he builds guitars and plays guitars. He got me addicted to guitars. I'm in the booth that evening planning to go out and party like I was used to in the world. That's just what you did. Yeah. He looks at me and he says, tomorrow morning, you're going to church with me. And I said, no, to, tonight I'm going out to party and tomorrow morning I'll be <laughs> drunk and high. So I'm not going to any church. He looked at me with a big smile. And he said, well, there's beautiful girls at my church. And I'm thinking, okay, I'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> um, but what's amazing is behind him was a picture of Jesus. 
And I noticed that even in the picture of Jesus that he had in the back of his studio, Jesus looks somber. And that's the Jesus that I remember from most sermons hearing preachers preach. Sure. That's why I always steered away from church. I saw Christians who would tell me that he was a God of love, a God of grace, a God of joy. Yeah. Yet they were always depressed, broken, down and out, true. impoverished and that's angry. So, true. so sad. So it seemed to me to be a contradiction in terms. Yeah. Well, I went out and partied. He showed up at my door at 830. I was still drunk. I was still high. That was my past. I'm not glorifying that. That was just the truth. He picked me up. I went to church. And that morning I walked in the door, not believing in God, not believing he was real or that he could actually communicate with me somehow. Yeah. Though I can say my entire life, I had looked for him. I was always one that went to the woods and sat in trees to just think about life, eternity. Yeah. Why am I here? Who created me? And that's a God-driven thing. But I heard the gospel and the person preaching read the text that I'm reading today. And so I'm actually going back to square one with you this morning of what Five first changed my life. Five and when I read the story that we know is the Christmas story in Luke two, but it's actually just the story of the birth of Christ. Yeah. It was a key point that stood out to me. It radically changed my life. I stood up before I knew what an altar call was because I'd never been in church before. I went down to the steps of that stage that I knew later on was called the altar. And an altar is a place where things go to die, not to live. And so I went to this altar and I knelt down and I said, God, I don't know if you're real, but if you're there, I would love to know you. And I, I, I need something. Oh, Either you're real or I want to die. It's amazing. I just don't want to live another day. And just as clear as I'm hearing you, you're hearing me. Deep down inside, I hear something speak. Yeah. And I heard the voice of my Lord say, Jason, I am Jesus, and I do love you. And I literally jumped off of the altar, turned around in front of people, and asking myself honestly, could this just be the tequila or the marijuana talking from <laughs> the night before? Yeah. But I noticed I was instantly sobered, and I heard the voice clearly. And I said, who said that? And again, I hear a voice say, I'm Jesus. It was very Damascus Road experience. And then in 97, mm -hmm. Jesus walked in the bedroom and appeared and shook my bed across the room and cracked the foundation of the home and mighty experiences with God. Wow. But it solidified in me the reality that if Jesus is who he says he is and he is real and he is yeah. and he's coming back awesome. and we have a job to do yes, that sir. far transcends the name of our church buildings, the names on our broadcast, who we are yes, as personalities. Sir. We are minute and microscopic in the scope of time, yet we are the apple of his eye. And he put this joy inside of us for a reason. And I have to say that after pastoring for 14 years, seven years into that pastoring, I lost my joy. I let stress begin to overwhelm me and overtake me and it almost killed me. And over the last seven years, it's been a returning to the first place, to my first love, to the reason that I first said, I want you. And I didn't mean to come on the broadcast today and shed a lot of tears, but it just no, seems no, to be happening. Listen, this is why we're here. This is what uh, I love real folks. I'm real. I can't, I don't play pretend stuff. And um, what you're talking, I know you're talking. I'll bet you that seven, year, when, seven years ago was when success began to come towards you. And then you start thinking, I've got to keep the success by myself. It's my, this is, I've done this. It's my responsibility. And the truth of the matter is, I will build my church. And the Amen. gates of hell will not prevail against it. If you're watching Amen. today and you're under all kinds of pressure and tension, you're thinking, my God, how do I, how do I beat last week? How, what do I do? To, let me tell you something. Be yourself. Just be you. You're good enough the way you are. And allow God to speak through you with all your weaknesses yeah. and all your fallibilities and all the stuff that makes you who you are and who make God love you the way you are. But the answer that comes out of you is life, eternal life. Amen. And um, that is the proof that guys like me and Jason can sit here and say, there is a way, he is the way.